The Taliban working on an economic comeback, but not without some help. A Taliban spokesman reportedly telling an Italian newspaper the group will be relying on financial help from China, saying, quote, China is our most important partner. Joining me now is Gatestone Institute senior fellow Gordon Chang. He's author of the book, The Coming Collapse of China and the Great U.S.-China Tech War. Gordon, your thoughts on this, how quickly this could happen? Well, China has the money, and I suppose it could happen fairly quickly. But remember, if Afghanistan were just a question of money, um, it would be a sea of prosperity right now, the U.S. dumping billions and billions of dollars into the country. Uh, the problem here is that it is a question of stability. The Taliban is not the only element in the country. It's the strongest element, but it has enemies like ISIS-K. And those enemies become enemies of China, which means they will attack development projects, which means that China probably will not end up putting all of the cash that it promises. I mean, it has failed to do this in a number of other countries, including Iran, to meet pledges. It's going to fail to meet its pledges in Afghanistan as well. James Freeman, jump in. Yeah, uh, Gordon, I wanted to ask you, uh, speaking of China, this um, this issue where the Chinese uh, now kind of wanting to take the U.S. up on our on our climate uh, uh, agenda and saying, uh, suggesting, I think, that uh, they want us to trade away uh, the freedom of people in uh, Hong Kong or Taiwan in order to get some meaningless climate deal. I hope I'm wrong about this, but uh, are you concerned that... Uh, the U.S., the Biden administration is going to, to get a, a climate promise from China and, and forget strategic interests? I always worry when the Biden administration talks climate and China in the same sentence. And I especially worry when John Kerry is on Chinese soil. Now, the Chinese have said, as you mentioned, that, you know, they're not going to cooperate on climate unless we cooperate on other things. In other words, to acknowledge Chinese uh, superiority on all sorts of issues. Um, to a certain extent, I think it'd be very difficult for Biden to do this, largely because there are so many groups in the United States that would be arrayed against it, and also because the Chinese are just obviously hypocritical. They say that they are making improvements on climate for their own reasons, not as concessions to foreigners. Well, if that's the case, then, you know, James, we don't need to make concessions to China. We'll just take them at their word. Uh, yeah. I want to get to this. Alibaba is promising to spend nearly $15.5 billion to promote social equality as part of the Common Prosperity Plan. It's part of a growing list of Chinese companies looking to get on President Xi Jinping's good side by joining his push to redistribute wealth. Gordon, what do you think of this? There's a word in the English language for this, and it's extortion. And it's not only Alibaba with its $15.5 billion pledge, it's also Tencent with a $15 billion pledge and a number of other companies that have said that they'll put in multi-billion dollar contributions. This is part of this, as you point out, this common prosperity plan, which is really dangerous because it is essentially code for going back to something that Mao Zedong would be familiar with. Xi Jinping reveres Mao Zedong. He doesn't have the political power to accomplish all he wants to. But he is cutting off China from the rest of the world. He's going back to a hard form of socialism. This is national self-wounding. Patrice, you want to get in? Question about uh, society and culture in China. I mean, I think this week we've seen a couple of areas where the Chinese government is trying to control young people, cracking down on the hours of video games they can play, but also kind of purging society of effeminate, uh, it, it, I put that in quotation marks, uh, effeminate uh, images in the culture. You know, what is the long term play here? What are they trying to do with the culture and with the young people? Well, this is really part of a cultural revolution, and that harks back to that decade-long campaign that began in 1966, where you essentially have the leader of China trying to do these things um, really for internal political purposes. And also, he just believes that there is, you know, the Communist Party's uh, views of society, of males, um, really is offended by Chinese, uh, what the Chinese are doing today. And, you know, they can succeed. I mean, they've got a lot of coercive power. 
But what really this does is it makes China a very difficult place for people to live. And eventually people will leave uh, China like they're leaving Hong Kong right now. So, you know, essentially, if you want to build a gaming industry, this is not what you do. If you want people to be happy, this is not what you do. But this is the way the communists view the society and the world. They just have the power. They'll do what they want. Xi Jinping also announcing yesterday that Beijing will set up its own stock exchange. This comes after the regulatory crackdown on Chinese companies and trying to prevent them from listing in the United States. Yeah, well, really what's going on here is this internal battle between Beijing and Shanghai, because Shanghai had the first exchange, Shenzhen has another one. China doesn't need a third major stock exchange, and that's what's going on here. Um, this is sort of Beijing trying to assert control over the more innovative aspects of uh, the Chinese society, and they want those companies to list in Beijing as opposed to relatively freewheeling Shanghai and Shenzhen. So, you know, this is not going to work either. This is something like the communists say, well, we want to make it so, and they believe it will happen. No, it won't. Gordon Chang, thank you so much for being here. Always a pleasure, always insightful.